Hi there and welcome to the ADK channel and I am very very excited today to welcome Mr. JS Clayton from Pitch Shifter, vocalist, frontman extraordinaire to the channel. Hi John, how are you today? Hey man, how you doing? I'm really well, John. Thanks for asking. Uh, we're going to kick it off with some very simple questions. Talk about a little bit about the band, what's going on, what's happened, the history of the band, etc. Uh, and I just want to kick off with the very, very first question is the pitch of the band name. Where did it come from uh, and the background behind it? Boss of Japan makes a pitch shifter pedal for guitar. And uh, we used to use it on vocals to get that <clears throat> super low vocal that we used back in the old days. And uh, it was pitch shift, the two words. And it just kind of stuck. We like the idea of a pitch shift is kind of like an inverted catalyst. In a catalyst, you usually put something dirty in, the catalyst cleans it up and something clean comes out the other end. The pitch shift is the inverse is you put something clean in, the catalyst bastardizes it, and then the dirty signal comes out the end. That's where the name comes from. Okay, so I, I didn't realise it came from the pitch shifter. I assumed it was from the pitch shifter pedal, but I didn't realise it was because of the fact that you used it on vocals, because I never, I just assumed that was just natural vocal uh, ability by Mark there. But um, I guess, so when you were formed the band back in, what was it, 1989, uh, was there a conscious decision to go into a like an industrial metal direction, or was that something that happened naturally in the rehearsal studio when you were all together? Um, I think there was a conscious decision. We liked what the drum machine afforded us and we liked its rigidity and it, we could layer the sounds up and really get it to sound ridiculously heavy. And we weren't really hearing the music that we wanted to hear it, throughout every stage of Pitch Sitter's life, really. We weren't really hearing the music we wanted to hear, so we just decided to create it. Uh, talking about that kind of heavy drum sound, the Elisis uh, AR-16 or SR-16 was the drum machine that we had back in the day and it would allow you to layer multiple sounds. So in a live kick drum with a band, you just get one sound. With a with an SR16 drum, drum machine, you could have one super low kick drum, a slightly higher kick drum, slightly higher kick drum, slightly higher kick drum. So you could have four kick drums playing at the same time with a slightly different sound to give you that massive sound that you could, it was very challenging to replicate with a live drummer. Okay, so it's kind of interesting about the fact that the, uh, the electronic drum kit, which might actually answer this next question, but uh, I'll let you take this one, which is uh, the first album didn't actually feature an actual drummer. So was this simply an issue of not being able to find a kind of like-minded drummer? Uh, or was it a planned decision to go down the program drum route? Definitely planned. We wanted to meld technology with super live, heavy crushing guitars. Um, and that's what we did. When we first started out a lot of promoters didn't really understand the band there weren't a lot of bands doing what we did back then and so we just get put on the bill with napalm death and obituary and carcass and just pure death metal bands right and i remember one promoter he said can i see it and i said what and he said the drum machine and i showed him the at least this drum machine was about this big and he was super disappointed he's like is that it i'm like yeah what, what were you expecting to be? He's like, oh, I thought it would be a machine that plays a regular drum kit, like a robotic. Now, Mark did vocals on the very, very first album uh, with yourself doing backing vocals. Uh, and then you took over basically vocals after the after the debut album. How did that whole situation come about? Uh I was in college, happily doing graphic design and other things in my life. And then they said, oh, we need your help with the graphic design. So I did that. And then my brother said, I can sing backing vocals. You sound exactly like me. Obviously, you've got the same DNA. And then he said, you know what? I don't really like singing. It's not my thing. I really like playing the bass guitar. So if you could sing, that would be great. So I was maybe 18. I said, sure, whatever. Um, the first gig that I did with the band was Wrexham Memorial Hall supporting Napalm Death in 19... And uh, there were 500 people at that gig. It was sold out. I remember that was my very first time I walked out on stage. I just walked out on stage like, holy crap, there's a ton of people there for an 18-year-old kid. And I had a moment of freeze, and then I just looked back at 
our kid, my brother, and he was like, just abuse him. So I just started telling the crowd to go and shove it, and they all would give me the Harvey Smith salute as a sign of their affection. And then I was like, you know what? This isn't actually that hard to <laughs> disabuse people, and they love it. That's how that came about. Okay, so I'm just thinking back to, I guess, going through your album catalogs, and I was kind of sort of working the trend and tra tracking like each individual album. And infotainment, for me, is that perfect bridge between the early and, I guess, the last day pitch shifter albums, sort of blending the more modern electronic drum and bass elements with the early uh, aggressive industrial sound. So was this something that was a planned bridge album to sort of get move away from that? Or was this just natural progression as musicians? Um... It was planned. I, I, once I was, I, you know, got the great honor of doing lead vocals for the band. <clears throat> There's only so far you can take that genre before you run out of things to do, in my humble opinion, right? Because there's no melody in the vocal. There's no harmony. It's very, oh. So the mu you can't have, well, I mean, I guess the death tones did. You can have super crushy, heavy, super crushing, heavy music with, sung vocals but still their guitar they have a lead guitar that brings some melody to the music so i felt like we needed to move on and do something that was a bit had a bit more melody and not like you know love ballads but just a bit more melody than super crushing staccato guitars that are dropped tuned to d or c and so infotainment was that kind of bridge where I started to say, hey, let's put some of these other elements in. Let's not just do the crushing heavy stuff. Because we were listening to that stuff. We were listening to drum and bass. We were listening to trip hop. We were listening to techno. We were listening to hip hop. There's a load of albums that have had influence on Pitch Shifter that don't come from metal, although we were listening to metal and punk and rock too. So it was definitely a planned progression. I don't know if it was a planned bridge per se. It wasn't like, oh, well, we were a we're going to do this bridge album and arrive at B. But it was definitely a natural progression where we, we had to add that layer of melody and harmony and otherwise we wouldn't be able to keep making the music progress. Okay, so I want to talk about Jim Davis. Uh, so Jim Davis joined the band for the Pitchshifter.com album uh, and the sound was a massive change or a significant change for the band uh, from the previous album. So was this planned i.e. pre-Jim, or was it the fact that Jim came in and that had changed the sound? Dot Com was one of the albums where I got a lot more opportunity to program and write songs. I actually wrote some of the guitar and bass lines in those songs, and I did a lot of programming, a lot more. Previously, it was Johnny, and I did a lot more of it. And that was another step on from Infotainment, where I just said, guys, I've got these ideas, and I want to make sure that we use them, and I think we should blend everything that we listen to on the road together and make a new form of music. So that was kind of pre-Jim, but Jim was definitely the icing on the cake. Jim Davis is a ridiculously talented guitarist, and he definitely was able to bring ideas of his own, but also able to articulate ideas that I have. You know, I would say, can you do wah, 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 wah. I'd make crazy noises, and he would just say it like this and do it on guitar. So, uh, yeah, Jim's kind of a virtuoso guitarist, much better than any of us. Um, so he did have an influence on the direction, but that direction was already taken. He was kind of a cherry, cherry on the top. Okay, so let's talk about your vocal style then. Um, so over the course of the albums, it's definitely changed. It's certainly changed. Was this something that was a planned change for you vocally? Or was this just something that naturally came about uh, through working on the songs? Both. Again, I just couldn't grunt anymore. I couldn't scream my nuts off anymore. There's only so much that you can do. Where you're like, okay, I've done all of that. That's not to say that it's in any way bad, and loads of people do it and they do it well. Just for me, I felt like, man, if we're going to get to changing the music, developing the music, progressing, and doing more fun things, and get people to understand what we're doing, we definitely need to have vocals that don't terrify people. Uh, okay, so now we're, we're still talking about obviously your vocals. Uh, as far as your actual singing, is this something you've had formal training on, or is that just something that you naturally developed yourself? Have you actually listened to any of the records? There's no formal training. We're lucky we can get on stage and people don't run away screaming. Um, it's just natural, whatever the heck it is, whatever style it is. Uh, we really like crass and rudimentary peni 
and Subhumans and all these bands. Also really like Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and all those bands. I am not comparing myself to uh, Rob and Clarence. Um, so it's kind of a mix of everything. We like the jam, the specials. We like metal. It's kind of a mix of what came out of my mouth and to that music. So I would say naturally developed whatever it is. Okay, so a little bit, this might be a little bit of a touchy subject. Uh, hopefully it's not. But what was the reason for the band's hiatus back in 2003? I don't know. I think we just needed a break. I could make something up and say that we were in cryo chambers and... Tibetan mountains or we owed the Russian mob money but I think we just needed a break again I am an old man now but starting at 18 and doing something for like 20 plus years sometimes you just need a break right a lot of bands are like oh we're gonna take a break get on with lives okay so um there were mentions uh, in back in 2011 I remember this coming out and there was mentions of new material being released or planned to be released in 2012 I think we all got quite excited that it was going to be a new album coming so whatever happened to the music that was written and will it ever see the light of day that was the sprint finish album uh, we wrote like two or three songs we did vocals on some of them uh, that was done in LA and I helped got my buddy uh, Brian from Turisitana Harry B's old man to help me on guitar. I don't know if they'll ever see the light of day. We put some of them out on the band camp. You can get a, a couple of those tunes in demo form. Pretty decent and mixed demos are on band camp you can get. I don't know. I think people always say they want new music, but do they? You, you, it, they like the old stuff. Do people want new motored songs? I don't know. Okay, so I'm definitely going to be going to check out some Bandcamp and uh, checking those tracks out. But uh, we need to still answer that final question then. Will we ever get any more new material from Pitch Shifter? Maybe. It's a lot of work and we're all getting older. Um, we're lucky to be around. I don't want to say that dramatically, but we've we've had sound men, merch men and agents have all died. They've all passed on. No, none of us are getting any younger. you know. And so we're all lucky that the band's still around and kicking and fairly healthy. So new material, I don't know. I'm really enjoying at the moment uh, servicing the pit shifter community with kind of keeping the, the legacy of the original material going. So we've been doing books on Kickstarter. We, we, we uh, Shirt, who was a very dear sound man of ours, who unfortunately died, he gave me a, a, a DAT tape 20 plus years ago, 1998. He gave me a DAT tape. Well, after we played a set in Tokyo, and he said, I'll oh, stick that in your bag. I recorded the set. I literally forgot about it for, since 1998. Fished it out last year. Put it in. I had to rent a DAT player because who's got DAT player anymore? It's ancient technology, right? Rented a DAT player, stuck it in the machine, and it sounded amazing. So then I canvassed the pitch shifter community and said, hey, I've got this amazing live in Japan. Do you want to put it out in vinyl? And they all said, yeah, green, translucent vinyl. So, you know, the fan base told us what, what they wanted, the community, and we put it out on bonus. I'm really having a good time marshalling existing resources to do stuff. We've done a couple of books. I got another project up my sleeve about getting some of the old material in a fun way that I think everyone will enjoy. So that's a long way around of saying new material maybe someday, but we're having fun. What we're doing right now, we've got this, we just agreed, we just foolishly agreed to play 2000 Trees Festival in uh, July 2023, or foolishly on the part of the promoters. So, uh, and then we're talking about trying to reschedule the tour that we had to cancel because of the pandemic and all that other stuff. So 2023, 24, we've got some stuff coming out. We've got some shows going. So hope to see everybody there and around. Okay, so thank you very much, John. I, I completely appreciate you taking the time out today. Um, it's been amazing to have you on the channel. Uh, it's been a, it's one of my you're one of my idols. It was a big wish for me to have you on the channel. Uh, and I hope people have enjoyed this interview. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, and for those of you back home, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I appreciate your interest in the band. I appreciate the interview. And I hope this works out for you. And take it easy. Peace.